Okay, welcome everybody. We are going to be solving problems. And before we do that, and I just want to give you an overview of uh, different documents that happen to be at Prophet Shasta, which is uh, important. Uh, so the very first document is this laundry list, okay, which is what is sent to you in the welcome message. Within that, the very first link is the L1 problem solving lecture video recording links. If you go here, you will see that uh, it has got information about various other folders that happen to be right. So if you are, let's say you attended the lecture and then you want to watch the recording of the lecture for your own benefit. So, you know, the lecture links happen to be here, then then we recommend that you we not only recommend that but it's uh, highly needed that you solve problems uh, on the lecture right so one thing is there is the problem solving folder right which is essentially l1 problem solving folder again this these links these folders exist in l1 extra material okay so you'll see l1 problem solving folder so you click on it then suppose we you want to solve problems on uh, your FSA introduction to financial statement analysis. You go to curriculum examples, and we are choosing uh, core CFA Institute books and the examples in the middle of the chapter so that you have a very good understanding of what CFA Institute expects from you, how the questions make you think the way they want you to think about a particular topic right so in this particular case we will be looking at this particular pdf right now in the first three learning module um, which is you know they, they do they only have one example since there are not enough examples what i'll be doing is i'll also be solving problems from your um, question bank right so this is the similar so same topic, more questions. Okay. So that's your um, <clears throat> question bank. So if you click on this particular folder, you will go to financial statement analysis. Uh, again, you will see introduction to financial statement. So what? So this is these are there are more questions that we'll be solving. Okay. Um, if there are enough questions in the knowledge check itself in the curriculum, um, then uh, I expect that the question bank questions are um, solved by the students themselves. Hmm? And uh, so on and so forth. More stuff is there if you want to read curriculum, uh, you know, not just Profit Shasa notes, but actually from curriculum, then please, uh, this would be the place uh, to go to. You will see in-depth uh, pdfs from cfa curriculum okay and uh, once you scroll down you can access uh, so we did introduction to financial statement analysis the lecture link will be on the right it has been broken down into two parts before the break and after the break lecture and then problem solving recordings are going to be in this column this particular column is going to be about all different um, uh, interesting um, articles or any kinds of remarks, uh, you know, so that it, your study uh, has more depth, uh, becomes a little bit more interesting. You also get some practical experience, OK? So having said that, let's get started on uh, solving problems from financial statement analysis introduction chapter okay in 2017 c limited the singapore based technology company filed a registration statement with us sec to register its initial public offering of securities right so there is the singapore based company that is trying to get listed in us in new york stock exchange so they are going to uh, ipo uh, on New York Stock Exchange. So definitely, when you uh, when you try to sell your shares or bonds, you have to offer a prospectus to the 
likely investors right and uh, that is that particular thing is called as s1 filing in us in india we use the word drhp right so in addition to a large amount of financial information and we had seen how big those documents are 300 400 pages the registration statement which is at s1 filing provided over 50 pages of discussion on c limited's business and industry very true which they should which of the following is most likely to have been included in c's registration statement so you have to be careful with these italics word like most likely least likely uh, because they can change the answer um, you know even though you understand the question but if you read it wrong you will pick the wrong answer so one has to be very careful uh, most likely best those kind of things are they are looking for the most relevant choice so which of the following is most likely to have been included in c's registration statements underwriters fairness opinion of the offering assessment of risk factors involved in the business so and projected cash flow and earnings for the business so in the registration statement the underwriters fairness also who is the underwriter underwriter is the investment banker in equity and fixed income we'll understand more about their role they play but they are the ones who are helping you go public in lecture number one in the introduction itself um, where I talk about the sell side, this is one of the functions of the sell side, right? This is the investment banker. Uh, so, so are so is is the investment banker? Are they responsible for fairness opinion of the offering? No, they have no such role. They they will help you out. They will help you size the issue, how much money to raise. They will help you price the issue. They will help you line up. Um, the investors, but they are not into this business. So they will help you write the S1 filing, um, but fairness opinion and things of that nature are auditors concerned, right? Um, and that too on audited financial statement, but not about the offering itself, whether it is a good buy or sell, that is the role of uh, analysts and other investment bankers who will provide an opinion on whether one should buy this uh, new listing or not okay so this is not correct b assessment of risk factors involved in the business that is definitely true because in s1 filing we saw in the index we saw in uh, drhp of the dmart as well you know risk factors uh, as to how an investor can lose money if they happen to buy the shares you know so that kind of a thing is very much needed and it should be a part of the registration statement right so if anything goes wrong, the the, the uh, company who's trying to get listed, uh, let's say, uh, you know, if the share prices go down after the uh, investors have bought it, they can say, look, we had already told you uh, these are the risks involved um, and uh, anything can go wrong. And uh, that's how they will be saved. Uh, C, although we know B is the answer, but let's look at uh, C as well. Projected cash flows and earnings for the business. So, so understand that registration statements and things like that, they do not project anything, right? They only show you historical, right? Projected cash flows and earnings are done by the analysts or the people who are trying to value these uh, companies, but that is done uh, on a private basis on... Uh, whoever is interested in after looking at the historical statements and other qualitative information and things of that nature. So after eliminating A and C and knowing that B is the, uh, the right answer, we go with B. And then let's move on to more problems from the question bank. Question number one, which of the following statements about financial statement analysis and reporting is least accurate? So you have to be careful. This is a negative um, word, least. So you are looking for a wrong option. You're not looking for an option that is right. So <clears throat> now let's read option A. Deciding whether to recommend a company's security to investors is a role of financial statement analysis. No, that's not the role of financial statement um, 
No, actually, that is a role of financial statement analysis, right? Uh, whether to recommend you will do the analysis to, and this is where you like, just like right now, how I confuse myself. I read this as analysis, but in my mind, I was thinking of it as reporting. So one has to be careful, um, you know, uh, you need to be alert that you read it right and you interpret it right. So deciding whether to recommend a company security to investors is a role. Yes, it is correct. However, this is a correct statement, but we are looking for an incorrect statement because they are looking for least accurate. So A cannot be the answer. B, providing information about changes in a company's financial position is a role of financial report. That's correct. Financial reporting is laying out the financial statements, right? So they do want people to understand the different uh, changes that have happened in the company you know and uh, in terms of how they did with their financials so that's correct b is correct so but again b is a correct statement but we are looking for incorrect statement so keep that in mind so a and b cannot be the answer so c obviously by elimination you can see say that if you're in a hurry in the exam um, you need not even read c because if you have already eliminated a and b c should be the answer so financial statement analysis focuses on the way companies show their financial performance to investors by preparing and presenting financial that's uh, that's correct um, uh, that's correct in the sense that's an incorrect statement and therefore that's the correct answer it's the financial re statement reporting focuses on the way of showing Remember that showing is different from analysis. So one has to have a good idea of what they are trying to. And these are a lot of these things are very qualitative. OK, so that's a. Therefore, because C is an incorrect statement, C is the right answer because they are looking for incorrect, least accurate. Let's move to number two. According to IFRS guidelines for management's commentary, right the mdna management discussion and analysis addressing the company's key relationships so key relationships are relationships with key customers key um, you know management people could, could, could be uh, you know your vendors suppliers uh, so ifrs is the standard setting um, is the other other guidelines right that's the framework so what are they recommending about key relationships so do they should these should be uh, uh, you know mandatory or neither mandatory nor uh, recommended or is it recommended which is a softer approach so generally speaking for things like this you know if uh, they recommend they will not make it obligatory they they'll say if you think this is important enough to be discussed please mention it if you think it should not it's not important enough um, any kind of changes in key relationships then you need not mention it so that's a gray area so that's recommended to is a softer approach okay we move so a is the right answer question number three which are the following statements regarding footnotes to the financial statement is least accurate again focus on the word least financial statement footnotes may contain information regarding contingent losses so again first what are footnotes footnotes are notes to the accounts they just it's just a legacy word um, that is still in use um, where footnotes used to be at the bottom of the page and you know however uh, they carry their own after financial statement as we had discussed in the lecture the footnotes carry a lot more information about the numbers that are shown on the core financial statements and uh, so from on that basis so financial statement footnotes may contain information regarding contingent losses okay so that what are contingent losses so contingency is uh, is essentially uh, the way i can give you an example to understand what contingent means contingent so suppose you are a tobacco company 
right? And uh, some people have filed a lawsuit against you saying that tobacco causes cancer. Now that the lawsuit is pending in the court, right? So the, po the court judgment can go against you or it can be in your favor. If it goes against you uh, on uh, contingent on the judgment, you might have to shell out a billion dollar loss or you may not have to pay anything. That's what they mean about contingent losses, which we are, don't know. It is speculative, right? So financial, so would they, would financial statement footnote talk about something like this? Yes. If it is material enough, if it is important enough that the losses and the, you know, the judgment can go against you and the losses can be in billions, um, you know, they should mention it. However, it won't show up in the financial statement because until things uh, really are uh, done, you know, so they will talk about it, right? Financial statement uh, footnote, uh, actually they might set aside certain amount of money and create a provision, so that also can happen. So, But they should talk about it if it's material enough, although it may or may not happen, right? So they will mention it. So. A is correct, therefore it is not the right answer because you are looking for negative. Financial statement footnotes provide information about assumption and estimates used by the management. That's correct. So the assumptions and estimates, so similar to how in the tea business, we talked about, um, you know, uh, we talked about um, how the our tea card was depreciated by 10% over 10 years to a salvage value of zero. So it had many, so we estimated the useful life to be 10 years. We assumed 10% uh, depreciation. Those, those things will not be shown on the key income statement, right? Those things will be shown on your uh, uh, you know, footnotes or will be talked about in footnotes in a general way. So again, B is correct. Therefore, it cannot be the right answer. So financial and so by elimination, again, you can say C should be the right answer. Uh, but here, let's also look for the reasoning as to why C is the right answer. The financial statement footnotes typically include a discussion of the firm's past performance and future outlook. No, they have no such role. They are not there to provide you information about past performance, future outlook, because they are uh, just notes to the accounts to help you understand what the um, why the number and how they have arrived at the numbers and your uh, core financial statement so c is incorrect and therefore it is the correct answer because they are looking for the incorrect answer right okay we move on to question number four for publicly traded firms in us the management discussion and analysis portion of the financial disclosure is least likely to require to discuss yeah, so mdna uh, what thing they may not be discussing in md and a right so capital resource and liquidity capital resources are essentially you know all your um, say liquidity you might have liquidity needs like liabilities you know current liabilities and so in order to provide for them what kind of um, resources you have in terms of bank facilities in terms of cash you know um, in terms of your operating abilities to generate cash through your business so those kind of things will definitely uh, be in operating items you know they, they will be discussed in mdna so so a is the correct thing about mdna but it is not the right answer because again we are looking for least likely we are looking for incorrect statement so the least likely to discuss results of operations no again results of operations is one of the things that they will discuss in mdna right? how much revenue they generated you know what is their profitability things of that nature these are results of operations so they will be discussed so b is again correct but we are looking for incorrect. So C should be the answer uh, because A and B have been eliminated. So will, will MDNA include items um, about unusual or infrequent items? Uh, this again is, a, you know, 
And by, by the way, one of the unusual or infrequent items we will study in income statement. If you do not understand it right now, that's OK. Um, but it is something that may not happen as part of your uh, operations. That is something that is unusual. You know, it only happens once in a while. Uh, so things of that nature. So MDNA is generally more about your core operations and things of that nature. So because A and B will definitely be part of MDNA, uh, and therefore uh, they can be eliminated as the right choices. C is the answer for. Uh, question number four, because it is incorrect. Question number five. Okay. Um, which of the following best describes financial reporting and financial statement analysis? So keep in mind these are qualitative play on words and uh, sometimes like even in question number four you know all the three options actually look uh, um, reasonably okay because this also could be there at times right but you have to look for the likely you know uh, so get used to the world of gray you know uh, as you may get mature in life not everything is black and white good or bad you know it, uh, there is something less likely, more likely, um, that's how a mature mind thinks. So this is where a lot of problem solving will help you refine your approach to these problems. OK, question number five, which of the following best describes financial reporting and financial statement analysis? Best describes. So they're looking for a correct statement. Financial reporting refers to how companies show their financial performance, and financial analysis refers to using the information to make economic decisions. That's correct, right? That looks because financial reporting should show the financial performance. Analysis is using this financial information to make uh, economic decisions. You know? But still, let's look for A, uh, look for B and C. Let's read them just to be uh, uh, careful. And financial reports assess a company's past performance in order to draw a conclusion about the company's ability to generate cash and profits in the future. Now, remember, it's not financial reporting that assesses a company's past performance. It's the financial analysis that does it. Right. C, the objective of financial analysis is to provide information. So B cannot be the answer. The objective of financial analysis is to provide information about financial position of an entity. Again, they have twisted. Um, this is the objective of the C is the objective of financial reporting to show the information, to provide the information. So B and C are not the right answer. A is the right answer. Question number six. Which of the following is an independent auditor least likely to do with respect to a company's financial statements? OK, least likely. Again, we are looking for an incorrect choice, right? So would they be confirming assets and liabilities contained in the fund? Yes, they will be confirming. They will be reviewing. They will be auditing. Yes, so it cannot be the answer. B and accept responsibility for them no way you know they just provide an opinion they are not saying that you know we have done everything that's if there are 10000 or 10 lakh transactions they will just do a handful of they will review just a handful of them and say that we have done our best and uh, however to the best of our ability you see again a gray area get used to this right um and there, there's a chance that they could go wrong or they might not have been able to, um, you know, uh, uncover something wrong. That's quite possible. And so, so they do not, um, and also they review their financial statement, like how we had talked in the lecture. They do not, they, they help you, uh, the, the internal team of the, uh, the internal controls or the accounting team actually already prepares it. Their job is to just make sure that they are fairly, reasonably OK. Hmm? C, 
provide an opinion concerning their fairness and reliability. Again, they they do not. Um, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, yes, this is correct. They do provide an opinion concerning their fairness and reliability, right? As we had seen in the auditors, um, you know, key things that they mention in their auditors report. So again, A and B, A and C are correct. Therefore, they are not the right answer. B is an incorrect statement, and therefore, B is the right answer. Question number seven. According to IASB, International Accounting Standards Board, which of the following least accurately describes financial reporting? Right. So again, looking for negative or incorrect statement. Financial reporting is useful to a wide range of users. Why not? I mean, many people can use it. Investors can use it. Uh, investment bankers can who are preparing to take the company public can use it. Uh, credit analysts can use it. Uh, creditors, banks who are giving money as loans to the company, they can use it. So many people. Uh, financial reporting uh, is useful for a wide range of users. That's correct. So it cannot be the right answer. Uses financial reporting uses the information in a company's financial statement to make no, that's not correct, right? They do not, they just their job, financial reporting's job is to just report or show or provide. So, therefore, B is incorrect, that should be the right answer. C provides information about changes in financial position of an entity, it does provide information about changes. So, A and C are correct statements, therefore. They are not the right answer. We are looking for incorrect statement. B happens to be incorrect statement. Question number eight. <clears throat> the role of financial statement analysis is most accurately. So now in this case, they are looking for a correct statement. Most accurately described as the reports and presentation a company uses. Now remember, they are talking about analysis so this cannot be uses to show its financial no it analysis is this is financial reporting showing the financial performance financial statement analysis is a common requirement for companies no financial analysis is not financial reporting is a common uh, uh, you know requirement c the use of information from a company's financial statements along with other information to make economic decisions that's correct so financial statement analysis does use the information from its statements to make economic decisions so c is the right answer a and b are pertaining to financial reporting okay question number nine which of the following best is the best description of financial statement analysis framework. Gather data, analyze, interpret the data, process. So this is those steps of financial, which you have to memorize. You know, so if you if you um, those are the six steps basically. So if you know those six steps, if you memorize them well, uh, you will understand that the first thing is state the objective and context then you gather the data then you process it then you analyze and interpret the data then you report update the analysis for future so b is <clears throat> for your question number nine question 10 which of the following would not require not right so again they are looking for an incorrect um, does not require an explanatory paragraph added to the auditor's report not regarding the turn assumption so this going concern is essentially has to do with uh, whether this company can perform in the future and they are not likely to go bankrupt if there is a concern about them going bankrupt then if they if the auditor has it to the investors so that people know 
that the company is on a shaky ground in terms of their business and financials. So this should be explained. Um, so this this will require an explanatory paragraph. So um, A, because it is correct, it is not the right answer. B, statements that the financial information was prepared according to uh, GAAP. I mean, that doesn't require any explanation. Uh, so, you know, so this is an incorrect, uh, I mean, this is just a uh, statement that, yes, you used a certain accounting standards. Uh, what more do you need to explain there? So but remember, the question is asking whether any of these items would require an explanation. Right. Um, uncertainty due to litigation. Yes, uncertainty due to litig litigation is lawsuits, like that tobacco lawsuit I talked about. If there is uncertainty, if there are, uh, you know, things can go against them or for them or whatever, you know, that should be discussed and more color should be thrown on it, especially if these are material, uh, if the amounts involved are material, then, you know, so, so A and C do require an explanatory paragraph. Therefore, they are not the right um, choices. B does not require an explanatory paragraph. Therefore, B is the correct answer. Question 11. Uh, in addition to the audited financial statement included in a firm's annual report, so the audited finance, so firm's annual report will include many things. One of them would be the financial statements. And remember, the annual report 10Ks will have audited. 10Qs will have unaudited because 10Qs need to be released faster. Which of the following sources of information is most likely to contain audited data? Okay. So which one will have footnotes to the annual? Obviously, footnotes are footnotes are providing information about the financial statement. So they are referring to the financial statement, which themselves are audited. So footnote, any kind of detailed numbers in footnotes will be audited for sure. Otherwise, you cannot come up with the, the overall number um, you know, for a particular uh, account. So footnotes, so looks like A is the right answer. Most likely to uh, management's um commentary management commentary also includes certain um how do i say their own estimates sometimes you know their own views and whatnot so they may or may not contain audited uh, data obviously but when they are referring to their operations and what happens to the, what happened in their uh, business they will be making use of the audited financial but they can also have other information which is qualitative which is also you know some kind of a view which uh, is not audited. Interim financial statement filed with no. Interim financial statements are in like the 10 Qs, things of that nature. They do they are not audited. So A footnotes to financial statements, annual. Uh, so that's correct because there will be footnotes to the 10 Qs also, but they need not be audited so that brings us to the next question <clears throat> a firm engages in a new type of financial transaction that has a material effect on its earnings an analyst should most likely be suspicious of the new transaction if so they're looking for a correct so you know they did some new type of financial transaction and uh, um, you know these are as we go further into FSA, you will see that there are many, um, as an investor, we are always very uh, skeptical of any kind of, uh, how do I say, mm, new ways of New ways of business is OK, um, but new ways of financial transactions are always uh, are looked down upon with suspicion as to why are they not doing it the way everybody does it? Why are they not recording a particular transaction 
the way everybody does it. So, for example, let's say marketing expense. Okay, marketing expense should be an operating expense, and it should be expensed as as you put in money towards advertising, like we did in T business, right? But what if someone goes ahead and capitalizes that expense, and does not uh, that money has been spent and is not recording it as an expense, but it is uh, putting it up as an asset on the balance sheet, right? So something like that is fishy. You know, which is uh, raises eyebrows and people are not comfortable. So, so you should be if if there is something like that, and if management has not explained its business purpose, you should be suspicious because they are just taking you for a ride without even actually explaining the details of things. So, uh, an analyst should most likely be suspicious. So this. I would agree with management has not explained its business purpose. It's uh, fishy. Um, okay, B should be analysts should be suspicious if the transaction if no accounting standards exist that applies to the this is correct. You know that you come up with some something really tricky something and uh, and it is not it is beyond. Then they are saying it is the beyond the scope of ordinary accounting, and we are special people. Something like that. We, as investor community, we are always skeptical of such kind of claims. Okay. Um, basically, the way a smart investor would look at it is, this is basically they are saying they are trying to hide something. They are not trying to tell you the truth, and they are just uh, trying to cover up something. And uh, trying to lead you away from the real nature. So something like that is always suspicious. Yeah. Uh, although uh, now I should, uh, having said that, because you know, uh, I must mention that sometimes there can be some transactions that can be uh, of that nature. Um, so between A and B, I would still go with A. Because if no accounting standard exists, that still I would, I mean, although I'll be suspicious, but it's still doable because there could be a new thing, new accounting standards might not have caught up with it. Right. So um, therefore, I would still go with A. Uh, if accounting standards have not caught up with it, and if management also has not provided the business uh, explained its business purpose, so then uh, it's a problem. Okay, so wherever accounting standards are not applicable, management should give their own guidelines and provide as to what's going on. Anyway, the transaction is not governed by existing regulations. Again, same thing. You know, there can be some things for which regulations or bills or laws may not have just passed as yet and things of that nature so you will be suspicious but again management should be able to give us more light to be able to throw more light and be forthcoming and transparent to discuss such issues so of all the things a would be the most likely answer question number 13 the step in the financial statement analysis framework that includes making any appropriate adjustment to the financial statement and calculating ratios is best described as processing the data right you are this is where you come up this is where you become a true analyst you are saying these numbers you know uh, number i do not agree with the number that they have um, i would like to think of the statement should have been presented more like this um, you know, th this is where you are now becoming an analyst. So that this would be processing the data, calculating the ratios, all that is processing. Question number 14, which of the following statements about proxy statements is least accurate? So, <clears throat> so proxy statements, remember they are the invitation to the, um, um, annual general meetings, or actually not even just at AGM. Anywhere there you require a voting uh, for any kind of resolution, you know, 
uh, proxy statements will be issued. Um, so proxy statements are a good source of information about the qualifications of board members and management. Um, uh, that's a good one. Ah, they are asking for least accurate. Right, right, right. Good. Yeah. So it's a negative, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. Uh, yes, proxy statements do have, um, you know, they whatever board members, um, you know, they are uh, asking to be nominated. Um, they, you will need to know the details of those guys. You know, what are what are their qualifications? What is their experience? So that you can actually make an informed decision. Otherwise, just by with the name, what uh, will you do? Right. So this is a correct statement. Uh, you know, it will give you information about board members and management. Um, it is not filed with SEC. That's not correct. You proxy statements are uploaded on the Edgar website, you know, on the SEC. So this statement is incorrect. Therefore, this is the correct answer. C, it is available on the Edgar website. That's correct. SEC is an Edgar page, like what we had seen in the lecture. Um, it's also there as a part of the link on your like an example of Microsoft. We had seen Google actually proxy. So it is available. A and C are correct. Therefore, they are not the right answers. Uh, B is incorrect. And therefore, it is the right answer. OK, question number 15. A firm's internal control are most accurately described as responsibility of the firm's board of directors. No. That's the responsibility of the management. Board of directors, they just oversee the management from time to time, right? And uh, internal controls are a daily affair. This is accountant who, who's headed, a team of accountants who's headed by the CFO. And internal controls, these are the guys who are actually preparing the financial statement, which gets later reviewed by the CA. Right? Are most accurately described as A, no, responsibility, no. B, directly affecting the firm's financial reporting, correct? That's true. I mean, if your internal controls are weak, if the accountants are not good, or if you are hell-bent on doing corruption, then quality of your financial reporting also will be bad. Uh, most outside the scope of an audit report under IR. No, I mean, it is, you know, your internal controls should be help you prepare your financial statements. Uh, in accordance with the accounting standard that you're following, whether Indian GAAP or US GAAP or IFRS, which can later be reviewed by the chartered accountant who comes to audit your company. So uh, A and C are wrong. B is the right, correct statement. And they're asking for most accurately. Therefore, B is the right choice. Question number 16. Which of the following is least likely to be available on Edgar? Corporate press releases, Form 10Q, yeah, and SEC. SEC filings, of course, is Edgar is SEC's database. So you will see, uh, you know, SEC filings will be there on Edgar. Uh, 10Q, you obviously, you will see it on Edgar. Corporate press releases, you will find them on the websites or on news or things of that nature, or you know, companies' website itself, or news websites, things of that nature. So they're asking for incorrect. So corporate press releases will not be seen on Edgar. <clears throat> uh, question number 17. Which of the following is least likely to be considered a role of financial statement analysis? Assessing the management skill of companies' executives? Not really, no. Uh, Determining whether to invest in companies' security. Yes, that is a role of financial statement analysis. To make economic decisions, that's true. That's role of financial statement analysis. So B and C can be eliminated. A, you know, um, I mean, although, um, I mean, this is partially true. I mean, it's that's, I mean, financial statement analysis um, uh, would help you figure out management's 
skill as well. But B and C are more relevant. And this is where um, you have to be a little bit good with judgment call uh, you know, on the, these kind of questions. These are tricky because even A in certain respects look true. But B and C are more correct. Um, so A also looks partially correct. Um, so it's not completely wrong in my opinion, right? So because by looking at the uh, financials and looking at other discussions, commentaries, looking at their past performance, you do get a certain idea of the management skills, right? But B and C are more relevant, are directly uh, you know, concerning financial statement analysis. The standard audit report is most likely, most likely, uh, they're looking for correct statement. Provide an unqualified opinion if material uncertainties exist. No, if uncertainties exist, how can you qualify? How can you provide unqualified opinion? So this is incorrect statement. We are looking for a correct statement. So A cannot be the right answer. Provide reasonable assurance that management is reliable. Yeah. No, they they're not uh, in the business of providing any kind of assurance and things like that. They are very standard ways of saying what they do. Um, and uh, other than that, they are not getting into slippery slope, you know. So and most likely required c provide reasonable assurance that the financial statement contain no material error that is true this is one of the uh, if they have given uh, unqualified chit then uh, clean chit then this would be this is the way they say that it contains no material error so you have to understand uh, how they state things again learn the art of language you know they are not saying everything is good. They are saying it does not have material errors. So which means it can have some errors. So do not just go about, you know, uh, learn to be uh, subtle in life. Uh, right? So there can be some errors as we had discussed in the class as well. But there are no material errors right? Uh, or significant errors. or. Question number 19, the step in the financial statement analysis framework of processing the data is least likely to include which activity? Yeah. <clears throat> so, by the way, uh, for, for this one, um, more because they were asking for most likely, C is the most correct statement, um, you know. B, A is completely wrong. B um partially incorrect things of that nature uh, c is completely right so c is the answer here okay 19 the steps in financial statement analysis framework of processing the data is least likely to include which activity so now we are talking about the framework the six steps right so processing the data is are you acquiring company's financial statement, remember, they are looking for an incorrect statement, right? Are you acquiring financial statements in processing the data? Are you making appropriate adjustments? That's correct. You are making appropriate adjustments. So B is correct. So we are looking for incorrect. So B cannot be the right answer. Preparing exhibits such as graphs, why not? Because this is how you tell the story of the company, how their revenue increased, how the profitability increase, how their ratios are changing over a period of time, all that is processing the data. So A, you are not acquiring company's uh, financial statement. That is that is in that step called gathering the data, which is step number two. So this is that doesn't come in processing the data, which is step number three. So A is um, the incorrect statement and therefore it is the right answer because they are looking for least likely question number 20 which of the following is an analyst least likely to rely on as objective information to include in a company analysis hmm? 
so corporate press releases uh, government agency statistical data proxy statements so again um, this is a question where all the choices sort of seem true i would go with a um, because obviously you will look at statistical data on economy and con um, um, companies industry so this is the econ economic analysis the, the topmost countries analysis then industries analysis you will be doing that you will be looking at proxy statements you know for voting shareholders and things of that nature um, although you will also be looking at press releases but press releases probably do not have as much information as these two you know these are loaded these are very relevant so although a also looks to be correct but it is b and c are more correct than a therefore we go with um so we'll say a is more incorrect or less correct However, because remember these are least likely most likely this is gray area just these are very tricky questions so a would be the right choice So because um, also there is also the the judgment part of it, the press releases, you know, uh, they're generally how do I say this? Uh, and sort of sometimes you know they're just given out as marketing material also, you know, in the name of press release or in the name of making it to the newspaper. A lot of advertising is done by the company. So people are generally skeptical. Those who are analysts or investor mindset, they like to go more on the hard data uh, than the marketing splash that the companies do. So corporate press releases, the general public reads them, but the analyst or the investor community likes to, you know, keep the, uh, keep themselves updated with the official filings. Uh, <clears throat> so A would be um, sort of the uh, wrong answer. You know? So I'm not saying that press releases do not contain information, because they do sometimes. You, know, you do keep yourself updated with company but, uh, prospects press releases as well but b and c are more uh, in tune okay number 21 which of the following statements concerning <clears throat> the notes to audited financial statement of a company is least accurate financial statement again we're looking for an incorrect financial statement notes are audited that's correct they are audited um I mean, the actually the annual ones we will say are audited. So I mean, this also can be wrong, you know. Um, include management's assessment of company's operating performance. Uh, no, financial statement notes do not contain. This is MDNA is what uh, MDNA contains management assessment of companies, operating performance and financial results. Contain information about contingent losses that may occur. So financial. Uh, statement notes do contain contingent losses information, right? So uh, B is obviously wrong, incorrect, and we are looking for an incorrect statement. It's the obvious incorrect statement. So B is the right answer. C is correct. Now, A, they, they, they have, I would say the question is not worded correctly. Uh, they should have said annual financial statements footnotes are audited. So uh financial statement so i mean giving them a benefit of doubt but for because b is obvious incorrect we will go with b as the right choice for this one question the last one for this particular learning module in financial statement analysis framework using the data to address the objectives of the analysis and deciding what conclusions or recommendations the information supports is best described as analyzing and interpreting <clears throat> using the data to address the objective of the analysis. Okay. 
objective using the data to address the object oh using the data oh okay 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 fine you're not addressing the objectives you are actually using the data to you're not stating the objective you are addressing the objective which you have already stated and now you're confirming or or, or concluding or using the data fine fine okay so remember the steps are you state the objective you gather the data you process the data you analyze and interpret the data uh, right you report the conclusions then you update the analysis right so uh, using the data to address the objective of the analysis and deciding what conclusion or recommendation the information supports uh, this that's not processing the data no that's not reporting the conclusion you are still at the analyzing and interpreting the data stage fine so a should be the right answer for this particular question so which would be like say sort of step number four after you process the data now you're using the processed ratios and adjustments and whatnot to figure out what conclusions or recommendations to make so that so a should be the right answer okay that concludes our you know uh, working on the problem solving and hopefully it uh, help, helps you and uh, we'll do more of that and you please go ahead and solve as many problems as you can and there will be a practice test coming up as well on the same topic where you can now again figure out um, how how good you were able to digest the topic and please do not be ashamed of watching the recording again please do not be uh, lazy about solving the same problem twice if it needs be memorize the problem that's also okay okay we, uh, we need to get better at it the more number of times you look at these things uh, hear these things the better your uh, outcome would be so it takes time uh, it's okay and uh, so, all right, continue with your preparation and uh, all the best.